On today's episode of Locked On Suns, the Phoenix Suns get another road win in Denver, beating the Nuggets, winning the season series, and making us all pull our hair out wondering what exactly this team is once again. We'll discuss the win. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons. I am a writer at Dime Magazine, the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcasts. And I also create written and video content as part of the Locked On Suns Insider Community, which you can sign up for at the link in the show description below. Thank you for finding us wherever you are on this Wonderful Wednesday evening into Thursday morning, a winning Wednesday. We are free and available everywhere, including YouTube. So just hit that follow or subscribe button wherever you're finding us. Get a new episode in your feed every single Monday through Friday. Become an everydayer. Keep up with the team here with Locked On Suns and get locked onto the Phoenix Suns all season long. 104 to 97 is the final score. Our moment of the game picks up. Midway through the third quarter when the Denver Nuggets made their one big run of the game, and we will look at how the Suns basically battled back after that. Today's show brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Again, 104 to 97. Let's go straight to our moment of the game. And we'll pick it up right as the Nuggets cut it to nine. So KD catches the ball on the left corner, steps out of bounds. Nuggets get the ball. Jokic works it into the paint, scores a little bunny over KD's head. That cuts it to nine. Single digits for the first time in a while. And first time in, let's say, four or five minutes of game time. What happened next is basically that the Suns simultaneously got a little cold, didn't necessarily work the offense quite at the elite level they had been, while the Nuggets watched Jokic get a little more aggressive and get to his spots. And they cut the lead to ultimately four. Basically right after that, and this is really the the reason it's the defining moment of this game is, the Suns basically flip the switch right back. And they go from book who started really hot in this game and then completely went cold and finishes, I believe, 5 of 15, 5 of 17 from the field. They go to KD pretty much, you know, maybe it was during, I think there was a timeout or, yeah, there was a timeout by the Nuggets at 5.55 after the lead was still 9. It went back and forth for a while. Nobody could really score. Colin Gillespie misses a, a air balls a 3. Jokic misses a three. Book misses a three. Maybe it was after that that timeout where the lead is still at nine. But honestly, Denver cut the lead even more after that. So I'm not necessarily going to say it happened then. I don't know. But that's the, that's the magic of what the Suns can do on offense when they are clicking is it can go from Book's show to KD's show to Beal's show without it feeling forced or awkward or, you know, making a few mistakes as that transition happens. And KD makes a tough mid-range jumper. They go to him a few times. Book then gets a pull-up three in transition. And then they get a three off of ball movement with Gordon 
getting it to go from the corner and the Suns go back up 11. So again, the offensive stuff I think I've I've hit on. On the other end, they didn't just get lucky. They basically forced Gillespie to beat them. Yes, Jokic, MPJ, those guys missed some shots. KD blocked a Gordon layup. So it wasn't just Gillespie. But to force him to make to take three shots as the game is kind of hanging in the balance and the Nuggets are making their run, but Reggie Jackson's off the court and in the middle of all of this, Contavious Caldwell Pope picked up his fourth foul in I believe his fourth foul in the third quarter. And so he goes out and the Nuggets are just forced to rely on their bench guys during this key moment of the game, whereas the Suns, as I mentioned, have Booker and Duran out there. Not to mention Allen and Gordon working the offense. So that was a big differentiator as well, but then I think it's still a step further than that to watch how the Suns, from an IQ standpoint and an effort standpoint, worked to make the right the nuggets that they wanted to take shots take shots right so gillespie takes seven shots in this game more than peyton watson more than christian brown almost as many as contavious caldwell pope and you know on the other end it didn't feel like they ever were really able to get gordon going this is not just in this stretch now i'm just speaking big picture it didn't really feel like gordon was ever able to feast inside Part of that is Durant. Part of that is, you know, Jokic not necessarily driving to the basket or getting those interior touches. Part of that was Jamal Murray being out and affecting. They basically did not really have any success running pick and roll the Nuggets in this game. So that's a place where Gordon's cutting and his offensive rebounding and, you know, off ball movement can really affect things. That's cut away. Reggie Jackson, obviously, is the main culprit there. His inability to really affect the game tonight is part of why that offensive pick-and-roll attack didn't work. But then in this stretch, the Suns are able to make it so that, you know, Gordon doesn't get any interior looks in this stretch outside of the one where he got blocked by KD. Jokic basically doesn't either outside of the one that cuts it to 2-9. And you see Gillespie take three shots. So it kind of just encapsulated a lot of what went right for the Suns, where their best players, Duran in particular, were able to make big plays on both ends. Their offensive process was really good. They got more contributions one through nine in their rotation than Denver did. And defensively, they are able to dictate some things that the Nuggets are doing because of their effort and intensity and execution. That's the blueprint. I mean, it's really nothing special here. It's nothing unique, necessarily. That's how the Suns are going to have to beat most teams, especially with no Nurkic and, you know, when they have a talent disadvantage and a size disadvantage, which frankly, you know, I guess not a talent disadvantage per se. They were without Nurkic. The Nuggets are without Murray. But definitely a size disadvantage in this one, which is always going to be the case against the Nuggets. I just thought to not only... It would have felt different, right, if the Suns had just gotten out to a big lead early and just kind of carried it home. Maybe they have a sketchy fourth quarter again. But this was a well-earned win in large part because of this stretch where, yes, they have a great second quarter, They make a lot of threes in the first half. You feel very good about where they are. But then to come into the second quarter, have Denver start to make some shots, start to get things going, make their run, and still have an answer for that, that makes this a a definitely one you can hang your hat on. Coming right after another win in Denver that I think the Suns felt like they could hang their hat on. And... Got all of us excited. Why have they they been able to really take it to the Nuggets this season? Play them close in a year where inconsistency has been the only consistency, 
We'll talk about the season series, which the Suns have now won two games to one coming up next. First, today's show brought to you by Nissan. Here's the deal. If you're the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further, if you've ever, ever wondered what adventure could be around the next corner, well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capability to take your adventure to the next level, starting with the 2024 Nissan Rogue, which is perfect for city drives and great escapes. They have class exclusive Google built in. You're always updating assistant to call on for almost anything and gone are the days of connecting your phone and dealing with the hassle of tapping around on the screen. Instead, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system, all making the 2024 Rogue the perfect midsize crossover for your next big adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada, which will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or that Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. NissanUSA.com Today's show also brought to you by the Amazon Fire. That's right. The Amazon Fire is your destination for TV sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV, which provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, the college basketball tournament, or the regular season of our lovely sport of basketball, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently also created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports bands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked them out before, trust me, it's great background info. Something on the second screen to have on or to just catch up on the news of the day. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. Keeping it rolling, let's talk through this season series. So back on December 1st, the Suns lose by eight in Phoenix to the Nuggets in a game that Murray and Gordon both missed. Reggie Jackson... Justin Holiday start and both play really well. And that is a big part of why the Nuggets are able to pull out that win. Although on Phoenix's side, you have no Booker, no Beal. Bates Diop in the starting lineup. Josh Akogi, Nasir Little, Jordan Goodwin all playing 20 plus minutes. So things looked very different. If you will remember in that game, Nurk scored 30. KD scored 30. And it went down to the last few possessions. And Jokic was just able to kind of put the team on his back with 16 assists and get them over the hump. Last week, the Suns beat the Nuggets in overtime, 117 to 107. We obviously saw Nurkic foul out that game. No Booker. Grayson Allen steps up with eight threes. Beal, 16, 6, and 6. And of course, Durant with 35 eight and five, and the Nuggets were fully healthy in that game. Eubank steps up. Jokic turns it over seven times, and another quiet bench performance. In this one, we just went through it. No Murray. Jokic never really presses the gas. The Nuggets' role players do not make their open threes. In particular, Reggie Jackson, Michael Porter Jr., and Gillespie. And the Suns win. So what I wanted to really look at is what are the connective tissues within these wins? Is it something? Is it something about the Nuggets? Is it something about the Suns? Is it something about the individual matchups and who's defending who or how these teams play? What is it? 
I think just going through it there, one of the things that jumps out right away is Kevin Durant has been, at least, especially as a scorer, pretty unstoppable in every single game. He is now averaging like 33 points per game in this in this series on the season on basically actually no i mean he's he's hasn't been the most efficient but he has just been able to pile up shots and i think one of the things there is right they've basically single guarded him not that first game when book and beal were out but aside from that and all throughout tonight's game they have they have not really sent a lot of aggressive help or double teams or anything like that and they've just kind of trusted whether it's porter jr or it is Peyton Watson or it is Aaron Gordon to just hold up and at least get a good contest and prevent, you know, the easiest of easy shots and hope that works. And it obviously kind of hasn't worked. So I think that would be one thing, right? Because last season in the playoffs, we saw a lot of aggressive help and, and attention being sent toward Durant when he got opportunities to score. They would have, oftentimes, if I'm remembering correctly, Gordon guarding Durant, and then they were, well, I, I it was any combination of Gordon, Bruce Brown, and Christian Brown all getting under him, poking at the ball, bumping him, playing him physically, fouling him, giving some fouls just to disrupt his rhythm, force him into turnovers, force him into difficult shots. And it it didn't work because obviously KD had a monster series and some individual monster games. But I would say on the whole, it worked well enough. What they're doing right now is not working well enough. So that's definitely one that I think you would have to point to. The other thing is, and this is kind of crazy to say, but especially in these past two matchups when the Suns' rotation has been fairly set in stone, although, again, the last one, Booker missed and Saban Lee played 13 minutes. But the Suns' bench is really has outplayed the Nuggets' bench. You know, Eubanks has, I think, on the whole, you would have to feel decently about how he's played. He was a minus 11 tonight. I think the minutes where Bowl or Thad or Durant were playing basically center in this game tonight were the best, but Eubanks had some decent moments. He at least was affecting where Jokic caught the ball and the timing of some of this stuff. I think, again, not having to guard the Murray-Jokic pick-and-roll game actually makes it so that Eubanks has a harder job. I've said a million times he is at his best on both ends of the floor in the pick-and-roll, so that, I think, is one element tonight but still, 27 minutes, I he, he clearly didn't kill them. They won the game. In the last game, he was a, a genuine positive. And then aside from him, you know, Gordon steps up tonight. Bol Bol had a great game in his limited minutes. Thad on the short roll was really impactful. And even dating back to earlier on in the season, the Suns got a big game from Akogi. Just hustle stuff is really what it seems to have been with the bench win that the Suns have been able to to use over the Nuggets. And I, I hate to kind of draw too big of a conclusion there, but I, I do want to say, and it kind of traces back to, Gillespie's not going to play in the playoffs, obviously when Murray's back. But, and they didn't play, they didn't want to play Strother. I get he's not really a point guard. You know, they're, it's the point I'm making. It's exactly hand in hand with the point I'm making, which is I'm not going to say every night in if a, in a potential playoff series that these bench numbers and even who plays would be exactly identical. But I do think there is something to be said for the Suns bench right now features like tonight, right? Royce O'Neal, Fad Young, and Eric Gordon. That is about the most experienced group of forward wings that you could bring off of a bench in the NBA. And there is something to be said for that when you look at Denver and it's Peyton Watson, it's Christian Brown, it's Gillespie, it's Strother on other nights at times, it's Zeke Naji who's up and down, there's Pickett off the bench, there's Hunter Tyson off the bench, young guys, young guys, young guys, basically 
you know, Holiday, Jordan, and Reggie Jackson are the vets, but they're not really, you know, consistently high level guys right now either. So I think that's exploitable for the Nuggets. Brown was steady for them. Even Jeff Green, you know, he he didn't always, you know, make every single play. He's an older guy now. We get all that, but he he wasn't going to make a lot of mental mistakes or effort mistakes or execution mistakes. And these guys will. So I think that is a, a clear through line. We know the Nurkic Jokic matchup that Nurk tends to really step up for it. We know that the Suns ball movement actually that's a great place to jump into the three-point shooting tonight. And we'll break down the ball movement side of things. To close out the show, we'll also break down Thad Young's minutes and really just marvel at what Kevin Durant is up to lately and especially in this game. All that next. First, today's show brought to you by Better Help. Here's the deal. Better Help is stepping up to fill a void, which is that we all need the opportunity at times to get things off of our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It can be important to let those out, not bottle them up and internalize them, especially when you have the opportunity to do that with somebody who's unbiased about your life, meaning they don't have any preconceptions. They don't have any baggage. They don't have a knowledge of what you are going through. You just voice it to them and they help you get through it. And today I want to tell you how I feel about something, which will lead us to what we will be discussing Suns-wise in the next segment, and it is that I do not understand why Thad Young did not play before now. Is it it the end of the world? Is it the difference between wins and losses for this Suns team? Probably not. You're talking about a bench player. You're talking about a small role, but the front office clearly thought this player could help the team. It felt like a good fit. For some reason, Frank Vogel had the mothballs growing out of him, and... Now he proves all of us right. I don't get it. It makes me want to, you know, scream a little bit, but here we are. Therapy can be different for everybody. Most of us have bigger problems than Thad Young or our favorite sports teams. And again, it is important to get those things off your chest even more every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA for 10% off your first month. Closing out the show, let's get right to it. So, box score oddity off the top. We'll get to the threes, as I said. We'll get to Thad Young as well. Box score oddity, once again, is the stat line that Kevin Durant put together today. 30-13, 30-13, and 5. Yes, 8 turnovers. You just got to hope those get cleaned up by... It's really, uh, at times lately, it has just been Durant. And that's still not where you want to be for one of your best players to be contributing to one of your most consistent pl- problems. But I'm setting that aside because they won anyway. And it is what it is. He was excellent and like I'm, I'm torn on a lot of these things as we have all these debates it's 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 game number 70 what uh, three I think and there's only so much new stuff we're really gonna get we come off this game where the whole narrative after that Spurs game one of them is that Durant didn't take any shots in the first quarter, but as I broke down in a Locked on Suns watch back, which you can get if you sign up for the Locked on Suns insider community at the link in the show description below or at joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Suns, I broke down that Durant, part of why he did not get a lot of looks in that first quarter is he turned the ball over twice and passed up some shots in a couple of other instances. So tonight he gets into a little bit better of a rhythm early. The defense was on an absolute other level. Mentioned the block on Gordon a couple times in that first segment, but it was all night. He did this in the playoffs last year, though, right? When he's able to be deployed in in a fairly straightforward role against a team like this where it's, hey, try to take away Gordon drives and Gordon off ball cutting and rebounding and everything else, and 
at times when you're able to help off of Gordon or be around the paint and be a help defender against Jokic, he can really excel. And he did that in this game, just like he did in the playoffs last year. And so you put it all together and it is one of his best two-way performances of the season. But bigger even than that, I think we can now say after three 25-plus point, 60-plus percent shooting games that Durant is over whatever lull he had mid-month where he, I mean, he started March incredibly hot, but from the 17th, about a week, about a week where, let's even include the Boston game. 20 points on 9 of 19, 13 points on 5 of 15, 11 points on 4 of 10. There's a 19 points on 5 of 15 in there in that Hawks game last week. And then basically, the Suns go back on the road and Durant picks it up. So, let's hope that was just a weird week. I do think he was tired. It looked that way. And I feel more than comfortable saying that he is looking right now, the past three games, as good as he has all year. Let's get to, well, it could be another box score oddity, but let's just do it. Picking up on the ball movement conversation. That is the other ingredient that I think the Suns have as an advantage over this Nuggets team, which is part of what makes Denver, the two things that make Denver really good defensively when they're at their best is their size, which you just can't replicate. It is what it is. It's how their roster has been built, and it's a big advantage. Or And the other thing is they're very well coached, and they do a very, very good job of executing their first rotation. So oftentimes, you will see a defender planted exactly where the offense wants to go, with the ball, with, the, with their bodies, whatever the case may be. So in the pick and roll, they're going to send Jokic to hedge, or blitz, or in a shallow drop, but they're never really going to have him in a, they're rarely going to have him in a deep drop. And even when they do, the weak side defender is going to be very, very early on in a set, planted at the basket to be a deterrent at the rim because Jokic is probably out on the perimeter. If, let's say, Jokic is in drop and, you know, that often will leave a lob open, so you're trying to send help to take the lob away potentially, or when that help comes, obviously that leaves the corner shooter open. The Nuggets know where they're going to go step-by-step on everything I just listed off and more from that basic set defense, that that core concepts of what they want to do. What the Suns are able to do with their spacing, with their multiple scoring threats, and when they are at their best, the rhythm and ball movement that they play with. And that's not just this version of the team, right? We remember 2021. We remember times last season. The Suns uniquely, not the only team in the NBA or the only team in the West who can do this, but the Suns can really punish the Nuggets by getting them into their second or third rotations, getting them into mismatch awkward situations that they do not want to be in and attacking them from there. And so I think that's why they continue to have some success against this team, even in an inconsistent up and down year, 29 assists on 39 made baskets tonight and 16 of 33 from deep. So yes, you still have 16 turnovers, eight of which come from KD. You don't get a lot of help at the free throw line. No NBA team is getting a lot of help at the free throw line right now. And yet you still win. And it's because of that relentless ball movement and the ability to generate open shots despite Denver oftentimes taking away plans A, B, and maybe even C from you because of all the things I just listed off. Last but not least, as I get a little bit blurred out and I return to form here on the YouTube audience, last but not least... We will go to the bench mob vibe check. And because of Nurkic's absence with the ankle 
we got an extended look at Thad Young in this game. I, like I'm sure many of you, were a little pes- was a little pessimistic slash concerned about how Thad would look in a game where inevitably he was going to have to match up with Jokic at times. I think the more I watched that side of it, Thad is not terribly different from a lot of the, you know, Rui Hachimura or PJ Tucker type guys who often will match up with Jokic so that the rim protector on their team, Davis or Embiid, in those examples, can be help guys. That's not that different than that. And again, benefited where Eubanks was at a disadvantage to not have opportunities to be a disruptor in the pick and roll. That actually worked to Thad's advantage. It just didn't feel like the Nuggets really went at him, so maybe things would be different in a postseason environment where they're game planning for you relentlessly, and obviously Murray would be back. But in this case, the defense didn't really kill them too bad, and on offense, he was everything you would want. He had a finish on the pick and roll, four offensive rebounds, also had a defensive rebound where he just out-jumped Aaron Gordon, which was awesome to watch made a bunch of good short roll decisions, not even just always the easy pass, but sometimes a skip pass to beat the rotating defense. A lot of good stuff. I think at the very least, he is an option in series or in spurts where small ball is going to work for the Suns. Now, we know that's not always the case. There's teams, including probably Denver at full strength, where that's just not going to, it's not going to fly. However, the Kings... Maybe the Mavs at times, although they have you know multiple center options now themselves. The Clippers. There are going to be opportunities where, just like we can talk about Durant being a center option, Thad Young will be too. And I think this game could prove to be a, a confidence booster for him, of course, but also for the coaching staff to say, we can plug him into those environments and we know what he can do. And maybe that ends up actually being one of the bigger ripple effects of this game is that confidence developing that will wrap us up for the day one more show to close out the week on friday so be on the lookout there hit follow or subscribe if you haven't already in the meantime i will have a watch back of that third quarter that i broke down to open the show on the locked on suns insider feed you will get a text message directly to your phone with that exclusive link as soon as i am done with it if you sign up at the link in the show description below or visit joinsubtext.com slash locked on suns. Enjoy your Thursday. I'll talk to you tomorrow.